Hey guys, welcome to the third and final part of the meme generator tutorial. Uh, if you haven't seen parts one and two, go back onto the channel and watch them. They're live now. Uh, so in the first parts, we uh, got our app variables configured. We have uh, the ability to take a new photo or select one from the gallery. Uh, we have this page set up here with all of our text input fields. Uh, so now this in this last part, we're just going to focus on some styling elements and a few extra tricks to get the proper meme feeling that we want. So let's go ahead and uh, go into this page, the meme page. So on this page, we basically want this paragraph and this paragraph to overlay on top of the image. And we're going to have to do a few steps uh, to make that happen. And we're going to be using a lot of containers right here. So take a container and you can drop it right there on top and put this input field into it and do the same thing on the bottom. Okay. And we actually need another one for this image. So there it is. And you can drop the image into it. And also we are going to need separate containers for these paragraphs too. So I'm going to go ahead and drop it there and drop that paragraph into it and do the same thing with the bottom paragraph. There it is. Okay. So now we have several containers going on and this is actually where this layout tree will come in handy to kind of help you see how all of the components on the page are organized. So right now you can see we have the one on the top. Uh, with the input field and the one on the bottom with the other input field. And so actually with the paragraphs, we want them to be held within the same container as the image. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it from here just because it's easier for me to keep track of. And we'll do the same thing with the other one. Put it in there. Okay. And now I can see how everything is organized, but this is exactly how I want it, right? So in this big container, uh, we'll call it the big container because it has the most stuff in it right now. So it has here the container with the paragraph, the top paragraph, the image, and then the container with the bottom paragraph. Okay, so that is fine. Now for the image, uh, go ahead and select the image and we need to be able to make it so that the text can appear on top of it. So we're going to go ahead and do a few steps. And a lot of these concepts are the same as in CSS. So if you haven't used CSS before, this might seem a little bit strange, but um, the way that I'm going to do it is pretty straightforward and it works for the purposes of this app. So you'll select the image and over here on the style tab, go down to advanced properties. And where it says position, you're going to want to change that from relative to absolute. Okay, so now once I've done that, you can see my paragraphs and input fields have gone all funny. Um, so now I need to fix up the paragraph containers that are inside this image. So I'm going to select the top one and you can go here to the styles tab, go down to dimension and position, go to position and here where it says Z index. Instead of saying auto, let's go ahead and push it up to three. And these just kind of tell you the order of everything, of all of those elements on the page. So let's do the same thing here to the other paragraph container. It's this one. And it's already here open on the styles panel. Position, Z index. And let's just change it to three. Okay. The other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to set some heights for this container, the big container with the image, because you might select an image from your gallery that's more vertical. You might select one that's more horizontal. So if we just set some heights and uh, widths, then this will help keep everything in order. So let's go ahead and select the big container. And under dimension and position, there's minimum height and max height. So let's go ahead and change those both to 300. And I'm just using 300 because this should be functional for, you know, whatever different size image that you're going to pick. And then we can also fix up the layout. So let's go ahead here to layout to justify the content. That's the paragraphs within these images. So let's go ahead and pick this one vertically with space between them. That looks right. Okay. That's already looking better. And then we can align the items centrally. Okay. 
Perfect. So that's already looking more uh, meme-like, right? Now, another thing I can do is uh, set some padding to this main container, container number three. Um, so let's go here where it says margins and then select padding. And we can change this one to five on the top and then five on the bottom. Now I can fix it up a little bit further just to make this uh, a bit neater looking. So let's go ahead and select that image again. And uh, from here under dimension and position, I'm going to go to height and I'm going to change that height to 300. Okay, so we saved that and you can already see that this looks a lot better. Uh, this input field is kind of pushing into the image. If you want to adjust that, you can, but it's fine for now. The text is uh, overlaid on top of the image, which is exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and test it out and see how it looks on the app itself. So let's choose select a photo. And maybe this time I'll pick this, this double dog picture. <laughs> Two times, this is fine. Let's meme it. Okay, and there it is. And you can already see that the uh, the position and size of the photo have changed. So let's now type in some meme text when it's really, oh, again, I can't type. And let's try the bottom one, really fine. Okay, awesome. So now you can see that the text is showing up on top of the image, which is exactly what we want. Perfect. Okay, so this is almost done. So now we basically just need to do a couple of more things to get the last, to put the finishing touches on it. So if you remember from the demo, once the meme was complete, we tapped it and then that made everything else go away. So we're going to actually use a page variable for that. So I'll show you how to do that now. So let's go here and we're on here on the meme page to the variables tab and select page variables. And I'm going to make a new one now, and this one we're going to call it cinematic mode. And this is a good example of how page variables can be used to represent a lot of different things. And in this case, it's going to make it so that only the finished meme is visible on the page. So uh, for this value type, we're going to select true, false, and the rest of this is fine, so let's save. Okay, so let's go back to the view canvas. So we want to bind that page variable to a few different things on the page. And the first one is going to be this main container in the middle, the one with the image and the paragraphs. So let's go ahead and select it from there and open up the logic canvas. And I'm going to select set page variable and drop it right there and connect it to component tab. And you can see here when I select it that it already has cinematic mode chosen, which is correct. And I'm also going to bind it to a formula here. So go here to where it says assigned value and select this icon and choose formula. And the formula I'm going to use is here. Exclamation point, page vars, cinematic mode. Okay, there it is, enter. Now this exclamation point is actually called an operator. And I'm not exactly sure how it works, but this is a good concept in programming to that comes in handy in a lot of situations. So let's hit save. Okay, and we actually wanna do the same thing to these two input fields. And so let's go ahead and select the top one. And under properties, go down to advanced. And under here where it says visible, select that icon and we're going to bind it to the same formula. So again, exclamation point, page vars, cinematic mode. Enter, save, and let's do the same thing to the bottom. Properties, advanced, visible, formula, and it's the same thing. Enter and save. Okay, let's save that. Okay, let's test it out now. So basically what we wanna do is make our meme and then tap the image and make everything else go away. So select a photo. Let's choose uh, some good Mexican food here. Meme it, type here. 
Yay, tacos. Yum. Enter. And tap the image. And there it is. Okay, the meme is almost complete except for one final thing. So what's missing here? Obviously the text. The font needs to be a different font and a color, right? If you want to change the uh, font across the entire app, we can go here to the theme panel and go to fonts. And if you already have the font file available, you can find them for free online. Uh, you can go here to add font file and upload impact font. That's the uh, classic meme font. So here you can see that the format is a TTF file. So let's select that, open it, and pick OK. You can kind of change your settings if you want. And let's go ahead and hit Save. So now that font should be available. Uh, so go back here to the theme page. And under here, where it says All Theme Variables, go down to Typography. And uh, where it says Font Family Content, we should be able to select the font now. So let's select that, and there it is, Impact. Perfect. Now let's save, and everything should change to Impact right now. Okay, good. Now this is looking right. Um, the last thing you can do, and just to make this look better, is of course change these paragraphs to white so that it actually shows up. Uh, so from here in the Style panel, under Typography, there's Text Color. And we could just move this to white. And we can do the same thing to the bottom one. OK. And let's save. And it's still a little bit small, so if you want, we can even go one step further and make that just a little bit bigger, just so we can see more. Let's change that to 24. And we can do the same thing here on the bottom. And all of this can be customized however you want. You can go ahead and add another paragraph uh, for to give that drop shadow effect and make that one black. But this is fine for now, so let's go ahead and make one last meme. So select a photo and let's pick the double dogs again. And meme it. When it's really, really fun. <laughs> and then tap the photo. Okay, so this looks great. We succeeded in creating a meme generator and uh, not a moment too soon because I'm just about out of coffee. The next step that you might be thinking is uh, you would probably want to save this somehow and download this file to be able to share it. Uh, but that's actually a separate topic and we would need some kind of a database to achieve that. So for now, the purposes of this tutorial was just to kind of show how to construct the UI and get everything set up to make this work. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope these concepts were useful and that this can inspire you to either make some really funny memes or make some other really cool apps. Thanks for watching.